Hi guys, and welcome back to Life of Posey. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn an old dog toy into a new dog toy. Posey got this little dog bone right here for Christmas, and as you can see, it's already falling apart. So instead of tossing it out or stitching it closed again, I decided that I would transform it into a new toy rather than having these green and red colors around my house all year long. So with the choice of so many fabrics that I have on hand, I'm gonna turn this little dog bone into a really cute dog bone. So stay tuned. So first things first, you wanna take out all of the stuffing that's already in this dog toy. It's really good stuffing and you can just reuse it. So I'm removing all of this batting out of here, every little last piece. And let's see, within this batting is a little squeaker toy. These squeaker toys can actually be purchased on Amazon. I did a little research and you can purchase a pack of about 50 of these tiny squeakers for $10. So if you wanted to make lots of dog toys, you could just purchase a pack of these. But because I'm just repurposing this old dog toy, I'm gonna reuse the squeaker and the batting and I'm going to use this bone as a template to trace out my new dog toy. If you want to be able to use this pattern over and over again I would trace the old dog bone directly onto a piece of paper and then we can use that template to cut out lots of different stuffed dog toys and I would leave about a quarter of an inch to, an e to about half an inch extra for seam allowance and just give this a rough trace. It doesn't have to be perfect. There my bone shape is. As you can see, it's a little bit wonky. So one of the best ways to cut something like this out is to actually fold it in half and cut just using one side of the traced image. So I'm going to go ahead and cut mine out here. Now that I've cut it out, I can open it up. And as you can see, it's even on both sides. So now this will be our template to cut out our fabric. I have this lovely floral fabric left over from a project several years ago. And I think that this will make a really adorable dog bone toy. So I'm gonna cut my pattern out of this. So for this dog bone, you will need two pieces of fabric. So you can go ahead and Fold your material over like so and place your dog bone on the material. Try to use an end where you can use the extra fabric for another project. So think about your spacing when you're doing this. And then you can pin this onto your fabric or you can draw right around it. Miss Posey, are you barking? She's excited for this toy. You can use a fabric safe marker, um, tailor chalk, but I'm just using a pencil because it's right in front of me. And I'm tracing all around. Okay, so I can see my lines on here. You probably can't, but the next step would be to cut it out. Okay, I have both pieces of my dog bone cut out. So the next step is to lay these two pieces together with the good sides of the fabric touching each other, facing each other. So go ahead and line those up as best you can. You'll wanna pin the two pieces of fabric together in a few various places so that it doesn't slip while you're sewing it together. You'll want to also be sure to leave an opening right here in the middle on the straight side. It'll be easiest to close up if you leave it here on a straight edge rather than a curved edge. Sometimes it's a good idea to mark a little line here and there or put in a needle there to know that this is your opening because when you're sewing, it's easy to get carried away and go right over that. So leave that little portion open so that we can turn it right side out when we're ready. 
So let's bring this to our sewing machine and stitch all the way around, leaving our opening. Okay, I've stitched all the way around my project, leaving this little straight portion open so that I can turn it right side out. One little final thing that I think is a good finishing touch to make your bone look nice when you turn it around is right here where it dents in, cut all the way up to the stitching, but not through it. And then you can also cut little lines all the way around the bins, but be careful not to cut into your stitch line that you made right here into the seam. Just cut up to the stitching on the bins. By doing this, it'll help the fabric to lay flat a little better when you turn it right side out. Okay, so now we will turn this right side out. Oops, wrong side. Open up my little opening and start pushing the fabric through. If you see some little corners that are stuck in, you can take a big knitting needle or your scissors very carefully with your scissors because you are likely to punch through the material if they are very sharp on the edges. But that's up to you, use something a chopstick works great too. And push all those little edges out. And as you can see here, we're starting to resemble a dog bone. Now we're left with this opening here. And when we are all done stuffing it, we will stitch that shut. But at this point, a good idea is to take it to your iron and iron it shut. And also make sure that this little area here gets ironed flat so that those pieces tuck under nicely for when we are ready to top stitch it. Once you have ironed your project, you're gonna take all the batting from the previous project and your squeaker. Now, when I pulled this squeaker out of the packaging, I noticed that it was tuck into one of these pieces of batting. So I'm gonna kind of tuck mine in there again and smoosh it together so it stays. And then these smaller pieces, I'm going to take and start pushing them way up into the rounded edges of the dog bone. Just use your fingers and push them up there. If you're having trouble, you could use a stick, a chopstick, something to help you guide those through. But this is pretty easy because this dog bone is not a difficult shape to fill. But just pack it in there all the way up and continue with the rest of the batting. I like to take the dog squeaker portion and put that right in the middle of the dog bone. Now we're completely stuffed. If you feel like you need more batting because some of yours fell out when your dog destroyed the previous toy, you can add your own, but I'm content with this um, amount of batting. So the next step is to close our little opening here. You can do this by hand, which is probably the nicest looking way because it wouldn't show as much, but I'm being lazy. So I'm gonna take it right over to my sewing machine, push all this batting this way and squeeze this under my presser foot and sew on the edge as close as I can to catch both of these opening sides of fabric to close the opening up. Okay, as you can see right here on the very top, I've stitched with the sewing machine all the way across and it has caught both sides of the fabric so my seam is completely closed off. And I don't think that it's very noticeable if you use a thread that matches the overall material. But like I said, you can hand stitch that if you like. But look how adorable is this little dog bone. I think it squeaks perfect, it's nice and soft and lightweight, and it definitely beats this Christmas bone which Let's face it, it wasn't very cute to begin with. So now I have a whole new toy made out of materials that I had on hand. But it doesn't have to stop right here. You can make this toy into any shape you want simply by drawing your template first. For example, if you wanted to make a heart toy for Valentine's Day, all you would have to do is take another sheet of paper, fold it in half, and draw your heart shape onto this paper. Remember to make it a little bit bigger than you think it should be because you do need seam allowance. 
And if your dog is a large dog, you can make this toy very big. And if your dog is like my dog and prefers small little toys, you could make a bunch of smaller ones. Just be mindful that you don't wanna make something that they could choke on. By drawing your shape on the fold, it helps with symmetry when cutting it out. And there's my heart. I can cut this out of fabric, sew it up, and I have an adorable heart toy in no time flat. And just like that, we have some brand new adorable dog toys. We've got some sweet little Valentine hearts and our dog bone. A couple of tips that I will give is, if your dog is a very rough dog and chews toys up very quickly, you might wanna buy a material that's a little more sturdy, something more canvas-like, and also maybe double thread, double stitch around so the seams don't come out as quickly or possibly using quilter's thread, which is a little bit thicker. And as always, watch your dogs when they're playing with their toys, make sure that there aren't any choke hazards and that they aren't destructing their toys and eating the filling. And when they do start to fall apart, make sure you clean up the filling and the pieces, dispose of them or create new dog toys as we have here today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you will give it a try. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and have a wonderful day.